Thank you for joining us. This session is to discuss the online and part-time graduate programs in healthcare systems engineering offered through the Whiting School of Engineering at Johns Hopkins University. My name is Cheryl Williams. I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Marketing for the Whiting School of Engineering. To give us more information on healthcare systems engineering, I have with us our chair, Dr. Alan Ravitz. Great, okay. Um, so again, thanks everybody for joining. Um, I was gonna touch on a few slides here that describe the program. Um, this uh, initial introductory slide here emphasizes the importance of an integrated team to bring together to solve the complex challenges that we face in healthcare today. Um, it's often the job of the systems engineer to work across these disciplines, um, bridging the gap between different educational backgrounds, different frames of reference, different terminology, <clears throat> and different value propositions um, across the, all the people that are uh, involved in the healthcare process. Um, most notably, uh, the patients and families. Um, after all, the uh, the idea here is to produce uh, systems, uh, technical systems, social systems, workflow, et cetera, uh, for the benefit of the patient. Um, the, <clears throat> um, Cheryl, you can move to the next slide. Um, some things to know about the healthcare system engineering. This is uh, the newest online master's program, um, as Cheryl referred to it. We have one program available. You'll learn a Master of Science in Healthcare Systems Engineering. Um, much like the systems engineering curriculum that the Whiting School offers, uh, is a total of 10 courses uh, for, the, for the healthcare system engineering program. And depending on uh, the pace at which you want to progress, uh, you complete the degree within two to three years or as, much as, as many as five years. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, admissions requirements, um, but notably there are two-year prior work experience required, um, and also to uh, facilitate the ease of access to the educational content, the lectures, the quizzes, the exams, the projects, um, all of the courses are available online. Um, Cheryl, you can go to the next one. Um, to motivate the, uh, the driving need for uh, the uh, applying system engineering to healthcare, uh, we tried to capture a few uh, compelling um, statistics and notes uh, on this slide. Most notably, um, there are uh, there's a cost, both financial and human life cost, associated with uh, the healthcare that we experience today. Um, hundreds of thousands of people um, suffer from uh, death from preventable errors. That means you go into the hospital for one reason, and un you unfortunately die for another reason. Uh, it could be the um, the, uh, it could be things like wrong site surgery. It could be things like uh, over infusion of medication or under infusion of medication. Uh, it could be a missed alarm um, that was uh, signaling but wasn't paid attention to. Any one of a number of, of dozens and dozens of reasons um, why people can die from preventable um, from, pe from from preventable errors. Um, the um, there are significant investments made in, in healthcare that, that go unrealized, um, most notably the things like the electronic medical record and other health in, information technology cost the, the healthcare system billions of dollars, um, and yet the, the cost of healthcare uh, in the U.S. and in other places just continues to rise. Um, you can see at the, at the most granular level at the, at the bedside um, in a hospital that uh, clinicians or nurses uh, spend a good bit of their time uh, doing tasks unrelated to patient care. Sometimes it's typing it the, in the medical record. Sometimes it's chasing down supplies. Sometimes it's responding to uh, alarms from devices that are false alarms. Uh, all these, these, these symptoms, the, the number of medical errors, the wasted investments in things like information technology, and the, the wasted uh, time uh, doing things other than uh, patient care are some of the challenges we want to engineer out of the healthcare system so that it works much more efficiently, at least to uh, better value, at least to more improved outcomes. It's safer um, and more affordable and accessible. All the investments that we pour into healthcare um, impacts um, our ability to spend um, th those resources on other social programs. Um, and again, these are the kinds of things we want to engineer uh, out of the system. Um, Cheryl, you can move to the next one. Um, healthcare is complex, like many other systems, and 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 one of the one of the helpful things that we do um, when we try to explain how healthcare can 
address the challenges of system engineering is refer to other th systems that are complex and that we can relate to. For example, the transportation industry. If you think about transportation, it involves things like uh, ground vehicles, aircraft, um, uh, maritime uh, transportation. Um, and even within those different transportation modes, you have different systems. Uh, let's take the ground transportation. You've got, um, you've got freight uh, trucks. You've got passenger vehicles, motorcycles, bicycles, um, and all, uh, other kinds of, of ground vehicles. And they all need to work seamlessly together. Um, and in, in many cases, those have been mindfully engineered to work in a, in a way that makes the system of systems work very effectively. The, the, the similar kind of thing is true for healthcare, um, that there are um, these different um, uh, levels of, of, of healthcare that you receive. For example, at, you can have a macro level where policy is set and regula regulations are set and where insurance um, op, uh, payers exist. Um, that's a kind of that macro layer. And then you go down to the micro layer and you have um, individual patients and clinicians and devices and IT, all those things have to seamlessly work together where you have a, a, a middle tier of things like clinics and pharmacies and hospitals. So that spanning of macro, my, meso, and, and micro tiers have to work seamlessly um, as a system of systems to realize the improvements in, in, uh, in healthcare value and safety. Um, and, and cost that we're striving to achieve uh, in the future. Um, the framework that we use for uh, studying uh, healthcare is described on this slide. It's the system of system characteristics that were um, defined by Mayer in 1999. We'll go in your course um, throughout the evolution of your um, the courses in the healthcare system engineering program. You'll touch on these topics of operational independence of different entities within the healthcare system, how they're managed, um, how, how geographic separation impacts, the emergent behavior that comes to bear when you bring together things like technology and um, efficient hospital care and transportation um, um, between, between care settings, and then the evolutionary development of technology and also regulations and policy and how that affects the ability to improve healthcare outcomes and value. Sure, you can move to the next slide. Um, a little bit about the degree program itself. Um, the, there are six core courses, which we'll talk about in a, a little bit more detail in a moment. Um, and those are complemented by uh, a set of electives that you'll be able to pick from. Um, the, the, these electives exist within other areas of the Engineering for, for Professionals program and across the university. For example, we'll be offering electives related to uh, biostatistics from the Bloomberg School of Public Health. There'll be uh, courses related to topics such as human factors engineering from the system engineering program, and then medical devices um, elective uh, from the applied biomedical engineering program. Uh, sure, you can move to the next slide. Um, this is a sort of a traditional system development life cycle um, that organizations such as the International Council for System Engineers or INCOSI uses to describe the processes um, and stages relative to the development of a system. And your courses uh, throughout this program will traverse uh, this, we call V diagram with feedback. You'll understand, um, you'll spend time understanding the whole problem before you try to solve it. You'll translate those problems into requirements. You'll examine different alternatives before selecting specific solutions. And you'll make sure uh, to test the whole system before you actually deliver it. That testing will involve verifying that you built the system correctly and validating that the system you built is actually the one that was is needed. All along, you'll be um, will be emphasized how important it is to con to consider the entire system lifecycle, from all the way from its conception through its fielding and then beyond when it's in operation. You're going to be um, trained to understand how things like maintenance and sustainment um, need to be considered through early in the process of development. I'm going to highlight also that um, while it may seem that through my description this is very exclusively technology focused, it's not. The program is designed to highlight the fact that social, 
um, culture, workflow, and other parameters will impact uh, the ultimate solution that's delivered. So technology is a big part of it, but it's certainly not the only part of the, of the, the um, principles that you'll be studying throughout the course of the evolution of the program. I'm sure you can move to the next slide. Um, the core co coursework um, involves uh, the, the courses listed here. There are uh, six main courses plus the, uh, well, there are, there's a set of courses that traverse the system engineering life cycle, um, everything from the introduction to healthcare system engineering through the test and evaluation. And then there's a, a final capstone project class that I'll talk about in a few moments. Um, but like I just mentioned, the, the, the courses are designed to essentially walk you through the discipline process of, uh, established by the system development life cycle. I'll also add that the courses for the healthcare system program are derivatives of the existing system engineering programs that, um, that ex the White School EP program offers. The, the difference is, is that we've adapted that content from the general system engineering program and tailored it to the healthcare area. We're highlighting um, various aspects of the healthcare field that make it unique. And you'll see that and through um, the, the, uh, the use cases, the scenarios, the examples, the quizzes, the projects that the instructors have woven into the course material. Um, they, they do refer back to some non-healthcare examples, things like I did before referring to like transportation, but those would be things to help get your, your frame of reference oriented towards things you, want, you currently understand and you can extrapolate into the healthcare domain as you work through the, the course material with, with the instructors uh, who will highlight very specific healthcare challenges. Things like um, how to build systems in, um, to deal with disaster relief scenarios or how to um, provide um, new technology and workflows related to a, a new medical device like at a ventilator. Um, those are the kinds of scenarios that you'll be working through the, the, with the instructors. I'm sure you can go to the next slide. Um, I mentioned the capstone project. Um, this slide has a few bullets related to that. It's one to two semesters in length. Uh, it is self-paced and you'll be uh, assigned a mentor um, or mentors, uh, depending on the nature of your project. Um, we'll be able to pull um, expertise from practicing system engineers and also healthcare professionals um, to round out the, the guidance you're getting um, and making sure that you have um, a, a full range of perspectives so that uh, you can um, walk away with a very practical um, solution uh, to the challenge you take on as part of your project. Um, Cheryl, you can move to the next one. Um, this is a, a description of what a core sequence might look like. This will vary somewhat uh, depending on the individual, but it's to highlight how you might traverse the, the core courses sprinkled in with electives. In this particular case, we've outlined it so that the required courses are uh, taken up front and followed by the electives. Generally, that's the way it'll work for folks, but it's not necessarily, um, it, it somewhat depends on your personal circumstances and, and possibly when the courses are offered. Um, but you can see there's a, a sampling of, of core, well, there's the core courses from the HSE program, and then um, there are electives from the, the uh, traditional system engineering program, plus um, elective from the Bloomberg School of Public Health, and then rounding out the, the course um, curriculum with uh, the capstone project uh, towards the end. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Okay, I think I hand it back over to you at this point, Cheryl. All right, thank you so much, Alan. So we wanted to take a couple of moments and talk about the application process for this program. Uh, if you are interested in applying for this program, uh, your application has three, three parts to it. So there's first the online application that you submit simply by visiting this URL here that you see here on your screen, ep.jhu.eu backslash apply. And then in addition to your online application, you'll need to submit to us your academic transcripts. So that's transcripts for any of your uh, any institution that you've attended previously as part of your undergraduate experience, we'd like to see those, uh, as well as your professional resume. And instructions on where to submit these documents can be found actually at this URL in the text above the uh, application form. Alan, would you like to talk about your admissions requirements? Um, yep. So as you can see on 
the slide here, the, uh, the bachelor's degree is required. Um, we're looking for folks uh, with experience in engineering and and, and healthcare. Um, the um, the GPA of at, at least a 3.0 is required. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're looking for uh, two years of relevant work experience um, in the engineering and healthcare space. Um, the, uh, and there's the final note there about uh, no GREs required uh, for admission. All right, thank you. Uh, so for our online and part-time programs here uh, for the Whiting School, we actually offer rolling admissions. Um, so we wanted to give you kind of, in, because we don't have any hard application deadlines, we wanted to give you an idea of basically um, how long it will take us to review a completed application and then some important dates so that you can kind of plan that into um, the submission of your materials. So uh, right now, on average, it takes us about four to six weeks to review a student's completed application package. So that, again, is the online uh, application form plus the academic transcripts and your professional resume, four to six weeks to issue that student a decision letter. Um, some important dates, spring registration is already open. It opened on October the 25th. Our spring term uh, begins on January the 28th. So if you are interested in studying with us in the spring semester, I would encourage you to submit your application materials as soon as possible. All right, quick review of next steps. Uh, if you're interested, again, in studying this program, uh, your first step is to submit your online application, ep.jhu.edu backslash apply, uh, and also to submit your academic transcripts and your professional resume. Uh, some important dates to keep in mind, spring registration is already open, uh, and spring the spring term will begin on uh, January the 28th. <laughs>